This video was produced by Okay, it's all right, no worries. Um, so I, my name is Sarah Jo, I'm teaching mindfulness and meditation. Um, and I actually, like Stefan, was gonna start out thanking the exec board here. Um, we don't have a lot of opportunities to thank them in a capacity that people other than them could hear it and like recognize them. So I just wanted to take that, take that time like Stefan and they've, you know, I didn't even really know what it was until actually the day before the deadline, sorry. <laughs> um, the day before the deadline and I was sitting in my car with my friend Jimmy here and I was like I know what I want to teach I want to you know teach about meditation it's like a thing I do that not a lot of people know about and you know they've given me the opportunity to do that and that's I think that's a really cool thing um, so I just wanted to start out by thanking them um, I'm gonna preface my talk a little bit um, by saying that my class isn't gonna be like this I'm not gonna you know be standing up here you know, with all of you sitting down, watching me, hearing me talk about what I know to be true or anything like that. Um, it's not going to be, as my sociology teacher would say, a performance of me onto you or anything of that sort. Um, it's going to be more of a conversation and it's going to be all about kind of like personal growth, a little bit like Stefan's. I know you'll hear from Andrew soon about that. Uh, we've got, we got a trend here going. Um, <laughs> So today is going to be a little bit about sharing my own personal story and my personal experience with mindfulness, with meditation. I'm going to explain a little bit on the way because a lot of people don't know too much about it, um, but just know that up front. Um, so people ask me, you know, when I started getting into this program, even when I started thinking about it, a lot of questions about meditation and mindfulness. People ask me, you know, do you have to say om? Do you have to, you know, sit? And there has to be a sunset and mountains and you've got to put your hands up. They ask me all things like that, you know, do you have to do that or anything? Uh, they ask me, is it like praying? Do you have to be religious? Uh, they ask me, what the heck is mindfulness? What does that even mean? Um, and a lot of those questions I can answer, uh, it's totally up to you. If you want to go climb a mountain and wait for the sunset and take a picture with your hands up, you can do that. Um, if you don't want to, totally fine. Um, praying can be a form of meditation. Meditation doesn't have to be religious. It can be any religion or it can be none at all. Um, so there's a lot of options and I think that's the beauty of it, at least for me. I had a couple pictures here that I forgot about um, of, you know, this is what people think of. You know, do you have to do yoga? You can, you don't have to. Um, so the beauty of it to me is that there's no one or nothing out there, physical or metaphysical, watching over you and you know judging your practice and saying you're doing it wrong uh, of course there's a framework behind it and there's a philosophy behind the entire thing um, and there's a lot of constants between most people's practices but at the same time anyone you can see could be meditating or you know be someone who meditates regularly uh, no matter what they look like no matter if you know they have dreads in their hair or you know they're a rock star it doesn't matter um, so anyone can be meditating. I'm going to give myself a blank slide here. Um, so with that, I'm going to start out with my own story. Uh, I started meditating because I thought it was cool. I'm not going to lie to you guys, totally honest. I took Sally King's Buddhist thought class my, soft, excuse me, my sophomore year, I want to say. Um, and I thought, you know what? No one really does this. I could do this. This is cool, you know? I could tell people. It's cool. Um, and it turned out to be a lot. Ooh, it's OK. Turned out to be a lot more than that. Um, you know, I left that class and I went home and I sat down on my floor in my room and I, you know, equalized my body weight like I was told to and I sat down and I closed my eyes and I, you know, I kind of had the idea for my class, you're supposed to just not think about anything. Turns out that's really, really hard. You know, you're sitting there, uh, you have your eyes closed and you're like, oh, I'm not thinking, I'm not thinking. Oh, Dread, I'm thinking about not thinking. And you get really frustrated and that's what I dealt with for a really long time. Um, and I started looking into it and learning more about it and kind of learning that, you know, you don't need to have any rules involved. And that's when I really started figuring it out. Um, since then, I want to say it was my sophomore year. It's been like two years or something like that. Can't keep any track of time. Um, since then, I've gained a lot from it. I've gained an incredible sense of patience that I never had before. Uh, if you know me, I'm still a little impatient, but it was real, real bad before. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I'm... I have a, 
larger sense of gratitude for the people and the things around me. Um, Stefan was saying I can connect with people that I don't necessarily agree with all the time. Um, and that's something that I've gained throughout my practice. Um, so this talk, you know, I was told I have, what, 15 minutes to talk about it. And I was like, I was telling Keith on Monday, I have 15 minutes. I can't delve into it or skim over it. It's the weirdest amount of time. <laughs> um, sorry, I didn't mean to call you out. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm going to delve into it a little bit. And I'm going to talk um, a little bit about what it means to be mindful. But, you know, I can't go too far. Uh, and that's why you should take my class if it opens. Um, so <laughs> mindfulness, uh, mindfulness is connected to meditation in, in a lot of different ways, or at least to me. And you know, what does that mean to be mindful? Does that mean your mind is full and busy and running around all the time? Not to me. Um, being mindful, it really means just like paying attention. And mindfulness is something that I was introduced to when I was taking a sociology class again. It's my major. Um, and I was introduced to sociological mindfulness, and that's an even bigger word. Um, and that just means paying attention to the present moment and what's around you, paying a little extra attention than you would. So, for example, you're walking along to class, you know, you're looking around, maybe you're thinking, oh, I just had a huge argument with my roommate, or something like that. You know, you're walking, and that's what you're thinking about. But to be mindful in that present moment, that's not what you're thinking about. You're thinking about, you know, what's going on around you, you're listening to the sounds, you're you know, smelling whatever's going on and you're feeling your foot and how it steps across the ground and how your weight's shifting in your body. Things like that. That's what it means to pay attention to the present moment. And, you know, the present moment can be whatever you want to pay attention to in that moment. But it's really not dwelling or getting caught up on a thought. Or at least, you know, that's the general consensus. In my class, everyone's going to create their own definition of mindfulness. So it's, it's hard to be really, you know, specific about what I mean here. Um, so... You might be thinking, OK, being mindful, how the heck do you become you know, more patient and open-minded and all of these great, wonderful things by feeling your feet hit the ground? You know, what the heck are you talking about? Um, on Tuesday, when I was thinking about how I was going to wrap this all together, I procrastinated, naturally. Um, and I was reading an article. OK, what did I do to this? <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to click something. We're going to see how it happened. OK. I was reading an article on Matador Network. Sorry. Um, and it's, it's about traveling, which, I mean, this article didn't talk about med mindfulness or meditation at all. Um, but this was the article, being a traveler doesn't automatically mean you're open-minded. And this is one of my favorite websites. I read the travel magazine all the time. Um, and a quote really stuck out to me, and I don't want to get it wrong. It said, while travel can be a means to an end, it is not the end. Travel by nature is like a hammer, a tool. Um, and <laughs> it was one of those moments where I was thinking about my talk, but I was doing this at the same time, and then I was like, oh, that's perfect. That's what I need. Um, so, you know, switching gears a little bit. As a college student, people are like, study abroad, go travel, go do all that. It's going to make you a better person. Well, if you get on a plane and just go and see it and, you know, take it at face value, you're not going to get anything out of it without thinking about it. Um, so it's kind of similar with meditation. You need to be thinking about what you want to get out of it. You need to be you know, in your mindfulness practice in the present moment, thinking about that stuff and keeping it in mind. Um, and that's another way that people are going to vary in their definitions of mindfulness. Um, someone might want to get some patience. Someone might want to alleviate stress. Someone might, you know, anything else, just be happier, things like that. And that's how it varies a little bit. Um, so from there, I want to give a couple other definitions of mindfulness. Um, these are some of my favorites. So they're coming from my background, my experience, and my thoughts. Um, the first one, mindfulness means paying attention in a particular way, on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. This one's by John Kabat-Zinn, who is the leader in higher education mindfulness, something we're going to delve into a lot. And the next one is a state of psychological freedom that occurs when attention remains quiet and limber, without attachment to any particular point of view. And so that kind of feeds into how you can interact with other people and be with other people without necessarily judging their, you know, their particular point of view, as they say, or perspective. Um, so I'm going to leave you with all of that. Um, I'm going to say thank you very much for listening. I know I was a little quicker, um, but I'm really excited. Thank you for everything. And my class will be all about your own journey and a community as well. So oh, I messed it up again. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, and this is, uh, <laughs> I forgot that I had this actually, just a little graphic of what I was kind of illustrating before. <laughs>